it's 3 a.m. right now. I couldn't figure out which camera I wanted to bring with me. I got so frustrated, I even broke one of them. First time going to New York is such a big deal, but is it really that big of a deal? Like, I don't understand why it is so difficult to make a decision. The idea of New York itself is just so overwhelming. Past few days, I've been looking at places to go, places to eat, and there's just like too much information. I hate travel. Hey guys, this is Sam. Welcome back to another episode of Are You a Tourist or Are You a Photographer? Or can't you be both? As we begin our approach, please make sure that all seats are in the upright position and trays are put away. Please remain seated with your seatbelt securely fastened anytime the seatbelt light is on. Sometimes I look back and think, when do I stop carrying a camera around on a daily basis? At some point, I stop taking everyday life pictures. Maybe since I moved to LA. I don't really walk around anymore. Everywhere I go, I just drive. <laughs> and also, things are getting less and less interesting to me. I'm no longer an all day, every day photographer. Instead, I have a photographer mode now. This means I found taking just random photo without a purpose, just getting more and more difficult. Remember last year I went to New York for the first time, I was like, we're definitely gonna make a video. I end up having a panic attack the night before because I can't decide which camera I want to bring. I want to take good photos, but they also need to be small and lightweighted. I also want to bring video camera because I want to shoot behind the scenes. But do I really need to make a video of this trip? If not, do I even want to bring a camera with me at all? If I just want to document the trip, I can just use my phone. Why do I take pictures? After an hour of packing and unpacking, I decided to bring my Canon A1 with a 50mm lens and end up only shooting one roll. I came back feeling so anticlimactic. Cause it's New York. How can you not photograph New York? Oh well. I guess I went there for the first time I went as a tourist. No, no, it's okay. No, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That <laughs> scared me for a second. There is me on the tourist mode and there is me on the photographer mode. Me, as a tourist, I had so much fun. In the short three days of time we were there, we spent a whole day in the gallery, 
and another whole day in the museum. And there are so many things to see. We took subways. We had awesome bagel, and we went to the pier and watched the sunset. I was so overwhelmed by New York. I just don't have time to stop and take photos. They're closed, so we gotta go. Besides, this is also G's first time going to New York. I don't want to slow him down, and、Thank、I don't、you. want to make the trip about me taking photos and making videos. In the end, I came back and look at that one whole roll I shot, and decide it's not enough to make into an episode. And this roll was also underexposed. <laughs> this roll is portrait four hundred, because I started the roll at night. Without the tripod, I feel like 400 is too slow, so I shot it at 800, counting on pushing it one stop later. But then when I finally sent it in for developing, I forgot to push it. So this whole row is one stop underexposed. But I mean, I think some of these pictures turned out pretty nice. Unexpected lesson learned: You can actually underexpose portrait for one stop. So, the first travel photography challenge failed. <laughs> But New York is super fun, and I really hope one day I can go back there, maybe just to take photos. <laughs> And then I took another work trip to San Francisco recently. I've been there a couple of times now, but it was all for work. We're off work now. We're leaving. Today is our last day. This time I have two extra days, so finally got time to walk around a bit. This time, I brought my third Minota X700 with a 28 millimeter lens that I never used before. 28 millimeter is pretty wide to me. One day, I all of a sudden realized that pretty much all my camera have 15 millimeter lens. All my small 35 mil. The X700, A1, FM2, and then my Pentax has the 75 mil that roughly equals to 50, and the Hasselblad has the 80 mil, and the Seagull has 75, that also roughly equals to 50 on a full frame camera. So most of my photos are shot around. 15 mil focal lens. Actually, I think it slowly formed my look, quote unquote. <laughs> And then I found this lens on my shelf. It came with one of the Minota I bought, so I thought I'm gonna give it a try. This time, I decided. Very quickly, I'm gonna challenge myself. I'm only gonna use one camera and one lens, and a bunch of films, and give this travel photo one more try. Look at the new guy. How good! So I started with an expired. Alpha 3200 black and white film, rated at 1600. I always like to use expired film first when trying different things, but this time I don't know if expired film is a good idea because higher speed film doesn't really age well, and the photos turned out. 
insanely grainy. <laughs> Granted, I never used the 3200 before and I don't know how grainy it's supposed to look, but this? Tell me this is not normal. I mean, this film is almost 10 years expired. Of course, it does not look normal. In my mind and in my human eyes, some of these photos should turn out nicely. I guess I forgot I was shooting expired black and white film. <laughs> I remember this person has such an interesting hairstyle. It was hot pink or hot red. It has a super fun looking pattern. I, I, I don't remember anymore. It's gone. It's all faded away in these black and white little greeny dots. I guess this is why I take photos. Because memories, they fade. I do like this shot. It kind of looked like an old press print. This might be my favorite shot on this first row. And this. It's the hallway of the hotel we stayed at. This looks pretty haunted. <laughs> One sec. And then we went to MoMA, the modern art museum. I loaded up a roll of Cine Steel 800T. There is something about walking around in the museum that I will never feel tired of. I can spend all day here just look at these artworks and just empty my mind and feel at peace. After MoMA, we also went to the Dion Museum because they are doing the Ansel Adam exhibit. There is no way I would skip that, even though I know nothing about landscape photography. It was just amazing. I can't put into words how I feel about it exactly. I've seen these photos many, many times in books and on the internet, and nothing compares to the experience of looking at these large silver gelatin prints. It's magnificent. And that's the only thing we managed to see at this museum because we were lost and we took the wrong bus and that cost too much time. Anyway, I definitely want to come back here someday and go through the whole museum. Film on my phone. 
Another thing I recently started to photograph is the hotel we stayed at. There is something that fascinates me about hotels: the long, empty hallway. Historical-looking lobby, The elevators. The liminal spaces. And if we are lucky, we can also go to the top of the building and see the city view. Then the next day, we went to Chinatown to grab some dim sum before our flight. As a Chinese, Chinatown is always an interesting and odd place to me. It's very familiar and yet very foreign at the same time. I was trying to capture some street shot, but the street is very busy and the colors are all over the place. I couldn't find a frame quick enough until I saw a bunch of kids practicing lion dance. I grabbed a couple of shots. This is the same roll from the night before when I was shooting the late night hotel. It's Cine Steel 800T pushed one stop. Therefore, this roll looks. Very grainy and contrasty. Some of these have pretty noticeable color shift. When I can't get it right, the final solution is to turn it into black and white. I guess that's why people carry multiple film cameras when traveling, so you can switch certain film for certain scenes because your ISO is fixed and your film is. Fixed. This video took me a long time to make because it's just all pieces of clips, very random and disorganized photos, and my drifting and meaningless thoughts.
I guess what I'm trying to say is, the idea of traveling brings me so much anxiety because there are too many decisions that needs to be made: where to stay, where to eat, what to see. I don't travel very often, but when I do, I always try to maximize the trip. This whole time, we went to a gallery to see Ansel Adams. Ansel Adams' pictures are actually here. This afternoon, actually, when we walked past by it, I was like, "Damn, those are good pictures." No wonder why. <laughs> I want to go to all the popular spots, take more pictures, better pictures, make awesome videos, epic-looking videos. But by the end of the day, everything will eventually fade away. Even the photos and the videos will be buried. With more photos and the videos in the coming future, it's how you feel at the moment that matters. You've been there, you've seen it, you were happy. Go to more places, meet more people, eat more food, and see more of this world. So just slow down, live life, be happy. <laughs> This is him. Right, I will see you next time.